If you grew up pretty much anywhere outside of Japan, you probably remember the Sega Master System as Sega's first home console. In reality, it was really console number, let's call it two and a half. In 1983, two companies released their very first cartridge-based home console system on the exact same day in Japan. One you've probably heard of. It's the Famicom, and it sold 20 million units. The other one you might not have heard of. It's Sega's SG-1000, and it did not do so hot comparatively. It's also a lot less graphically impressive and powerful of a system. Sega was down, but not out, and they bounced back in 1985 to release a console that would eventually come to be known as the Master System. But this is not a Master System. This is called the Sega Mark III, and it predates the Master System name by about a year. It's significantly more powerful than the SG-1000, and it's also more technologically impressive than the Famicom. Sega released the Mark III in 1985 in Japan, hoping to gain some ground on Nintendo's dominating Famicom. So the reason I called the Master System console number two and a half is because this is basically the same console, but it does have some pretty key differences. So first of all, take a look at these cartridges. They're totally different than the Master System cartridges from any other region, and so they're not compatible with any Master System outside of Asia. Its shape is the same as the SG-1000 cartridges, which is convenient because the Mark III is backwards compatible. There are black cartridges and white cartridges, and as far as I can tell, the white ones were released before the Master System rebranding as they only say Mark III on them, whereas the black ones say both Mark III and Master System. Also games released on cards called Sega My Cards in Japan. They were much cheaper to produce but could hold far less data, so the games on them were a lot more simple. Physically, this console looks almost identical to the SG-1002, which was just an updated redesign of Sega's first console. The controllers are called joypads, and they attach in the front, but they're wired from the side of the controller, much like the SG-1000. The console has a cartridge slot right here, the My Card slot right here, and then this expansion port in the front where you can attach some accessories. Okay, let's talk accessories. To Sega enthusiasts, the most important accessory for this console is the FM sound unit, which was only released in Japan for the Mark III. It adds nine extra mono sound channels to enhance the sound, but not every game supported it. Another interesting accessory was the Telecon Pack, which sends a wireless RF broadcast to your TV, meaning you don't have to plug in a video cord. As you can imagine, it was pretty spotty, and due to the differences in frequencies between countries, it's pretty hard to use on a non-Japanese TV. Those were the only two Mark III exclusive accessories, but there were plenty more for the Master System that released globally, like the Sega 3D glasses. The Mark III is also compatible with most of the SG-1000 and 1002 accessories, my favorite of which is this sweet graphic tablet for use with Terabi Oikaki, or TV picture drawing. Here's something kinda weird though, Sega didn't release the light phaser or any sort of light gun in Japan at all. So after releasing the hardware in other regions under the name Master System, Sega rebranded the Mark III, re-releasing it in 1987 with some serious upgrades over its overseas counterparts. The Japanese Master System looked nearly identical physically to the Master System you probably remember seeing in the States or in Europe, but it does have some key differences. First of all, it remains region locked, and the shape of the cartridges didn't change. It came with the FM sound expansion, a rapid fire button option, and the 3D glasses adapter all built into the console itself, which is pretty cool. Despite all those upgrades, the system is actually a little bit more compact than the Master System overseas. Also worth noting, not every country got the Master System treatment. In South Korea, the rebranded Mark III was called the Game Boy. In total, there were only 85 games released for the Mark III and the Master System in Japan. The worldwide total was over 300. Pretty safe to say that Nintendo won this round of the console wars in Japan. Overall, the Mark III is all of the charm of the Master System, but about 50 times more annoying to collect for. It's expensive, it's finicky, and it's region locked, so there's pretty good reason you don't see many of these floating around outside of Japan. And now it's time for some fun facts. There were only two games for the Mark III published by a company other than Sega. They were both produced by a company called Salio, who nobody had ever really heard of because they weren't really a real company. They were a dummy company created by Tecmo attempting to circumvent Nintendo's harsh exclusivity contract. It was a pretty obvious ploy, because Salyu's offices were also literally located at the same address as the original Tecmo headquarters in Tokyo. The rarest Japanese Mark III slash Master System game is... Great Ice Hockey? It was part of a really confusing promotion through Beat Magazine in 1988 to commemorate the anniversary of Fantasy Star, of all things. To enter, you would send in your UPC code for Fantasy Star, and possibly win one of just 1,000 copies of Great Ice Hockey with a sports pad controller, which, by the way, had not been released in Japan yet. 
Even weirder, the SportsPad controller doesn't even work on a Mark III. It only works on a Master System. And finally, for the first eight months of the Mark III's release, not a single game was released for her cartridge. Every game that came out during that launch window fit on one of the Sega My Cards, so they were the less impressive, less cool games. And that is probably everything you'll ever need to know about the Sega Mark III. If you like this video, if you like Japanese game history or game history in general, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Cartridge slot here, the card slot right here, and then an expansion port in the front where you can.